Hey guys, and welcome back to the observatory. In today's video, we're gonna talk about my favorite purchase that I've ever made in astronomy, my Hyperstar. I've owned my Hyperstar for two years and I absolutely love it. Not only does it give me a wider field of view at just under 400 millimeters of focal length, but it also allows me to shoot 25 times faster at f1.9 compared to the standard focal length of my telescope, which is f10. The speed of this telescope is unmatched compared to almost every other telescope out there, comparable to pretty much only it and the larger telescopes in its lineup, as well as the Rasa telescopes, also made by Celestron. The reason why it's able to zoom out and speed up the way it works is because of this piece of equipment here. It is rated at 390 millimeters of focal length and f1.9 and it is designed specifically for the telescope that I have. And how it works is you remove the secondary mirror from the telescope and then you insert this by screwing it in right onto the telescope itself and it attaches to where the secondary mirror used to be. And now your camera sits on the front of the telescope instead of the back. And now with all of these lens elements between your scope and your camera, this compacts the light down into a much faster light cone, hitting your camera way faster. All these photons are going and being crunched down into a much faster light cone than it would have been doing if you were using a secondary mirror to bounce the light all the way back to a camera at the back of the telescope. And that's why it collects light so much faster. And there's a couple reasons why I want to collect light as fast as I possibly can. One, it's not dark all the time. And when it is, here where I live, it's usually cloudy. And that's a really big problem. And so when it is clear, I need to take advantage of the clear nights as much as I can. With my Hyperstar plus my Edge HD and my trusty 294mm Pro, I'm able to shoot what would be six minute targets on my normal camera in just 15 seconds. The details pop out like nothing you've ever seen before and it collects light like a bucket. It's just amazing at how fast and how good the images come out of this thing are. And not to mention that you're using such a big telescope, it resolves much finer details than you would get with a two or a three inch refractor, you're getting really fine details with high resolution. This is just unbelievable, something that you're not able to get out of a lot of systems. With all the speed that this system gets though, there are a few caveats to this system that are definitely important to mention. Uh, first off, you have to use a filter drawer. It looks like this and you can just put filters right in there. If you are close to your telescope and you image at home, then this is not a problem. But if you work in a remote environment where your telescope is far away and you can't just readily go change filters by hand, this option isn't for you. You have to find a telescope setup where you have a filter wheel that is automated and electronically controlled. Unlike this, this has to be done by hand because the camera is in front of the telescope. If you were to use a filter wheel, it would cover up a large portion of the front aperture, effectively reducing the speed of the telescope. It won't work nearly as well as it would if you were just using a filter drawer like this, which actually takes up zero of the light path because it is the same size as the secondary mirror. Another important issue that I have to mention with the Hyperstar is the internal reflections that you'll get from the lens elements. When you're looking at a bright object such as Venus or Jupiter, the internal reflections of the lens elements will be apparent, showing you these weird geometric shapes that are really annoying and you have to edit them out. They're pretty easy to edit out and anyone can do it with a little bit of Photoshop, but they are just annoying and they definitely screw up the raw image. And finally, I have to mention the vignetting. I'm using a 294 mm. This is a 21 point something millimeter diagonal sensor, which is well inside the 28 millimeter image circle of this telescope. But that limits you to at the very most using an APS-C sensor and you're still gonna have some vignetting. So if you don't wanna have any vignetting, you're gonna need to use a micro four thirds sensor or smaller. I still do wanna try this out with an APS-C 
sensor, but they're expensive and I just don't have the money right now because I'm saving up for some brand new filters. Another reason why you wouldn't want to pick an APS-C sensor is because all of the standard ones that you can buy nowadays have 3.76 micron pixels versus the 294mm has the ability to do a 2.315 micron pixel, which is significantly smaller, really getting down to the resolution that this system is capable of. When you have the whole thing configured with this camera and this Hyperstar and my telescope, I have a 1.23 arc seconds per pixel image scale, which is right in the wheelhouse for getting perfect images. This does good in good and okay seeing, except for excellent seeing conditions, you would technically want smaller pixels or just to zoom in on the image itself. But there are not really any sensors out there that have smaller pixels than this with the same field of view, so my options are limited. Now, while the definitive camera choice is definitely the 294mm Pro, I've also been using for two years now the 294mc Pro with very good results. I will say that the pixel scale on the 294mc being at 4.63 microns is definitely not ideal. You're losing out on a ton of resolution with a Hyperstar, but it is really good for when you're using it in the regular configuration. And a lot of people tend to start out with a color camera, which is what I did. And so that's why I picked this one is because it was perfect for normal configuration. And so when I stepped up to the Hyperstar configuration, I knew I was losing out on a bunch of resolution with my 294MC Pro. So I knew all along that I wanted to switch to the MM Pro where I could unlock the one times binning. And now that I finally have it, I am very happy with my purchase. And I knew that this was the ultimate setup all along and I wouldn't switch it out for anything else. All right, so now let's talk about filters. If you selected the filter drawer that it comes with, you have the option of two inch filters as the native choice or you can buy an adapter that will reduce down the size of the two inch aperture to whatever size filter you have. Originally I was going to go with one and a quarter inch filters but then after reading enough reviews online as well as using the astronomy tools filter calculator I realized that one and a quarter inch filters were just barely too small and so I decided that knowing in the future I want to continue with Hyperstar and eventually go for either a Rasa 14 or an Edge HD 14 with a Hyperstar V4 on it, I know that I'm going to eventually want full frame two inch Hyperstar filters. And so that's why I know I'm going to be selecting the Bader Planetarium F2 ultra high speed filters at 3.5 slash 4 nanometer in the two inch configuration. I know that sounds like a lot of stuff, but basically I'm picking the biggest filters that are made to go extremely fast and very tight band passes. This is going to allow me to do the optimal exposures for the Bortle scale that I live in with little to no vignetting on the camera sensor and taking very, very good pictures with no halos. And finally, we need to talk about the image quality that we're getting out of this thing because although I've teased a few photos so far, I haven't shown you guys the full picture. And that really has to do with me. I just don't think that I'm at a point where I'm ready to share a lot of the images that I've taken. Although I've been acquiring photos for a very long time, I haven't had the chance to really dial in my processing skills. And I've owned PixInsight for well over a year now. And I barely know how to use it. I know how to do an image stretch, a background extraction, and an SCNR and not much beyond that. And I really struggle. And it's been a combination of not enough clear skies, being extremely busy with work, volunteering here at the observatory, and trying to start a YouTube channel, and so many more things on top of that, that I just really haven't had the time and energy to focus on dialing in my picks and sight skills. So now I clearly know that the limiting factor has nothing to do with the equipment and it entirely relies on me at this point. I'm going to have to step up my game here in 2023 and really dial in my processing and acquisition skills to get the most out of this equipment because it is far surpassing what 
I am capable of doing right now. I think that switching over to a monochrome camera over my color camera is going to make a significant difference. I think that the color camera, the 294 MC, uh, was struggling with some gradients and not producing really good white balance even after playing with a lot of it over a very long time. And color cameras and astrophotography are just a real big hassle. So switching over to monochrome, especially switching over to narrowband, both of those are going to make a significant improvement on the quality of image that I'm capable of shooting. So I'm really looking forward to what I'm able to accomplish with this Hyperstar in 2023. Now that I have a YouTube channel and I'm posting regularly, it's getting me, uh, holding me accountable for the work that I'm doing and it's making me want to get better at image processing and acquisition. When I do my live streams through SharpCap and through Nina, I know that the image detail is there. I just have to learn how to pull it out through the processing. It's not an easy task as everyone who's experienced knows but it's well worth the effort in the long run. And with all of that, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you're not already subscribed, please do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.